we give praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for allowing us another opportunity of worship. For the scripture this morning that I'd like to share as we do our call to worship comes from the book of Proverbs, the third chapter. The word of God reads, starting with verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. But I'm going to go one step further. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. There's a lot of conversations that's been going on, but I know one thing for sure. God is still on the throne. No matter what happens around this world, all of these earthly things that we're faced with, God is still on the throne. Life that we live and the prophetic things that are going on in our world, that you will have the last 
that same throne. And Lord, we know that you are sovereign, that you have all control. And there's nothing that doesn't happen unless you allow or you make it happen. We say thank you this morning, Lord, for your sovereignty, for your ability to be in control of our lives each and every day. Lord, we lift up our pastor Jesus this morning. Lord, that you endow with him the power and anointing that from on high. Lord, with all of God's power. Lord, that he might imply the word and preach his word to us. That we can stand another day and then build the trust that we need in you, Father. Lord, we just pray for him now. Lord, let him down into your deep treasure of your word. And let it come out with clarity and simplicity this morning. And Lord, let us be the people that are ready to hear and receive the word of God. Not in our in our ears, but Lord, let it penetrate our hearts this morning. That we might trust you, Father God, and trust your word. Lord, we pray now that this day be a day of worship. Glory and honor. Can we give you all glory and honor this morning in this service? And it's dedicated to you intentionally, Lord. Because we intentionally praise and worship you this morning. We ask this words in the mighty name that's above every name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen.
opportunity to call you our Lord and our Savior. Thank you, God. We are so indebted to you because of your grace and your mercy. For your gift of eternal life. We say thank you. Lord, we ask that you forgive us all of our sins and our trespasses. We thank you for the privilege to cry out our Father. Lord, we pray for all of the sick and all the weary. And Father, for those that are here this morning, God, and whatever the trial, the circumstance, or the situation, we know that God is able to do above what we ask of what we need. And so, Father, we just ask now, Father, that you would just allow your will to find us where we are and give us what we stand in need. We thank you, God, because you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And we ask it all in the name of the above everything. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for the choir and for the musicians.
Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians, I'm beginning at verse 15. Thank you, dear Richard, for serving. In a book entitled, A Serious Call to a Devoted and Holy Life, by the author William Law, William Law says, Would you know who the greatest saint in all the world is? He says, not the person that prays all the time, or the person that fasts all the time. It's not the person that gives up all of their homes to feed the poor and the poor. It's not the person that has been justified by faith. But the person that would be the greatest saint in the world is the person that lives a life that is filled with being thankful to God. All right. The person who understands that everything that they have comes from the Lord. Anything that they've ever accomplished has been by the grace of God. And whatever they will ever be has everything to do with the destiny of the Lord. But the characterization of a Christian that thanks God constantly and repeatedly can only take place when you have a thankful spirit. Now I know right now if I were to ask all of us about a thankful spirit, everybody in here at the moment has a thankful spirit. Yes, sir. But oftentimes, what the enemy tried to do and what life tried to do is to get you to grumble before you show gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you will catch yourself doing more writing than thinking. But if you will focus your attention on how good God is to us on a regular and continuous basis, you will start trying to practice your life living a thankful life. Quick inventory, just quick inventory. I want you to just think of five things you ought to be thankful for right now. Right, right now, just five, five random things that you ought to think of that you ought to be thankful for right now. I'm going to keep on saying it. I'm going to see how you can. 
I want you to think right now in just about five. I'm not just saying this to be talking. I want you to be thinking right now about five quick things you ought to be thankful for. I'm going to say it again because that's you still not responding. I want you to think quickly of five things you ought to be thankful for. And if some of you look at me like you need help, I shouldn't have to help you with five things that you ought to be thankful for. Right. See, the old saints didn't have a problem giving thanks to God. They, they would say, I'm thankful for another day. They didn't have electronics, so they didn't have to thank you for no iPad. They said, I just thank you for a clothes. Yeah. In my right word. And then all the time, you're not careful because we live in a system that's always, always propelling the negative more than the positive. You will miss God on a regular basis and, and, and not tell anything. You just got to learn how to be thankful. Every time you look around and, 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 and think about what you don't have, you want to start thanking God for what you do. You do that. You, you, you talk about, oh, hell, hell, no new car. Do you remember when you were walking? So one of the things that the enemy constantly wants to keep 
keep us away from a life that's filled with thinking God. That's really why I keep throwing this out. That's just like this thing that comes through. Because it, 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 it should be so easy for those to pop up on your screen and then for you to move past that. In the book of Colossians, at the particular time, the church of Colossians was, was dealing with some people that, that were always trying to tear down their belief system in God. They were always trying to bring about, about things that would move them away from how good God had been to them. Yeah, yeah. The, the writing in our text reveals some, 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 some very pertinent information when, when it comes down to being thankful and how the process really takes place. Because whether you believe it or not, it is not automatic for us to give thanks. It's just not automatic. Your, 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 your thankfulness is not automatic. It's something that you have to be conscious of. You have to be conscious of being thankful. You have to be conscious of, of having a life that is filled with thanking. You all have to think about how good God has been to you in spite of you. And you know, a lot of times, we like to share our success stories. But, 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 but what about the bad choices that God got you through in spite of, and you still have success? What, what about all the wrong choices and, and, and wrong decisions that, that should have went left? But for some kind of mother, God, God can help them and pray to you to get sister to you know how to manage your business. So let me move quick with you. Colossians chapter 3. Here too today in our text, it tells us how we can get to that point where we live a thankful life. And, and you learn how to just be thankful. Listen, you things don't have to go your way for you to be thankful. You don't have to get everything you want to be faithful. We're the craziest folks in the world. When God made you and me, he made something crazy. We're crazy, we're crazy. You know, we, we, we can be happy. I don't know, son, but if they ain't going the way I want, I'm going to tell you, I just think something's going to happen. They ain't going too good. Now. Crazy. Here, here we are being blessed, but we allow this diabolical influence to always try to feel God. And then you know, I'm looking for somebody to make that make yourself happy. You know me. I don't need nobody to make me happy. I can make myself happy. I'm all free. I can make myself happy. I don't need no drunk to make me happy. I can make me happy. I don't need nobody to pull my horse up to make me happy. When I think about how good y'all been saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Talking. When I think about how God is, I don't need nothing else to make me happy. Some of y'all can't get happy to your fuel injections get clean. God be the umpire over what goes on in your heart. 
although you did not read the baseball, the half in baseball was called a thunder. An umpire sits behind the plate, and at the bat is standing the back. It is the umpire that determines balls and strikes. And when you let the peace of God rule your heart, anything that comes toward your heart, you allow the umpire to have. That word let in the text means you allow it to take place. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, I will keep those in perfect peace whose heart and mind stays on me. So in order to have the peace that's talked about in the text, you have to let the Lord rule what goes on in your heart. This is what happened all the time with us. All, all the time with us, we, we will allow stuff to aggravate us. We allow stuff to intimidate us instead of letting God's peace rule our heart. See, see, when God peace rules your heart, you're not worried about the storm. You're worried about the invitations for him to come in the storm. Even though you know in this life you're going to have storm, but one thing you know, God will show up in the storm. And, and here's the reason why God got to show up, because it's according to his word. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and know that are called according to his word. So when the peace of God is ruling in your heart, when you get weak peace in, listen, you got nothing to worry about. He'll give you strength. When you get sad, peace will speak up and say, I know you're sad, but he's still sharp and soft. When you allow the peace of God to rule your heart, what happens then, you begin to experience only what God can be. The peace of God is amazing. Yeah. Because you have a situation where you know you ought to be told. And you just said peace. You know you ought to be, you ought to be doing something else, but right now all God is giving you is. Peace. And then people don't understand you looking at you and they're trying to figure out why, why you're not falling apart. Why, why you're not all messed up. And, and the reason why, because God has given you his exchange for your soul. I'm talking about when you let him rule your home. The apostle Paul says, he says it like this. Paul said, that's a given to me a it came to buck with me. It came to buck with me. He said, but God, God, God gave me some insight about peace. He said, the Lord spoke to me while I got this thorn in my blood. My grace is sufficient. Paul realized I'm going through something, but when God's word spoke up in peace, it said, my grace is sufficient. The, the, the peace of God. When we possess it, it gives us the ability to deal with things in a manner that does not diminish what our faith has done for us through Christ Jesus. That's why, that's why he says, let, let, let the peace of God, let, let the peace of God rule in your heart. In, in other words, lean not your own understanding, but in all your way acknowledge him and he shall direct your pain. So he said, listen, you, 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 you got to let the peace of God rule your heart. I said a few minutes ago, the peace of God is not out of man. It's not out of man. So what has to happen in order for it to take place, we have to allow God to be the umpire that covers what we got to Where you, where you should be mad, but you're not mad. Or have you had a situation where you want to be mad? And the Lord wouldn't let you get mad. Well, you want to be mad, I want to stab him right now. I want to stab him. But, but, but the Lord believes you to pray for him, but you really want him. Somebody say, knock him out. I'm going to say, knock him out. But, 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 but your heart is saying, But do you know that that is not you? That is beyond you. That 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 is what God peace is all about. Because if, if you want to know the truth, our nature is to get you. I'm gonna get you back, and I want you to.
know who got you. That's our nature. You kill my dog, I kill all your pets. I kill the one you've been shopping for in the pet store, I kill all of them. Because that's our nature. Because our nature is not based on people. That's the reason why we get upset when we hear somebody say something about it. Say, well, you ain't got to see it. We, we get upset about stuff that, that, that really, if you let the peace of God rule your heart, what do you want? Y'all got to Because some of y'all came to church this morning thinking about somebody you got to get for the weekend. Oh, yeah, they're going to have to be down home. That means you hear that? Yeah. See, they think they stand on mine. They think they think. They think they got freedom. I'm going to tell you, I got something for them. And the freedom of mine, because you don't have no peace. And really, your peace will mess your enemies up. Because they be waiting all the time. They, they, they be waiting for you to get them, man. And, and, and then when you don't get them, you don't mess their peace up because they figure you're going to get them and you ain't even worried about it. And when it says rule, you have to allow the, 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 the peace of God to, to, to be the key element to why you are being thankful. Because, because if God's not ruling it, it's not going to happen. Since y'all were listening to me, Let it mean 
allow it to happen. It's not a forcible occurrence. You have to let it happen. You have to let God operate that space in your heart to where he has control and give you peace to where you just think about everything. Just think. When you, when you think about all that God is and all that God does, you just find yourself being thankful. I don't have to look nowhere else but I find a reason to thank God. Not, not only that, he, he said, let the word of Christ dwell, dwell in you richly. We're all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in songs and in him and spiritual song singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Look what he said. That, that, that word again, let. He said, let the word of Christ. This is the only place where we have that terminology, the word of Christ, because oftentimes it's always the word of God. But notice what it said. It said, let it dwell. That word dwell means remain in you. Let, let, let it live in you. Let, 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 let it control you. Let, let it deal with, with everything that you're going through. Always let the word have dominance in everything that you do. Let the word. The, the, the problem oftentimes is with the word is if you don't have enough of it. If you don't have enough of it, there's a lot of things you can't come. Oftentimes, when insurance people write policies, sometimes the mistake of the policyholder is not to read the benefits of the policy. I wish I could read let, let me just start with car insurance. Car insurance. In, in car insurance, you, you will either have collision or liability, or you will have total coverage. Well, what is collision? Well, I'm 
Look at what your policy said. Why you just hardly just look at him? Your policy said, how can you be looking at him? You're looking at the moon in his eye, and you got a beam in your eye. In other words, you're looking at somebody with a twig in their eye, and you got a whole tree in your eye. That's what the policy is. I got some good looking clothes. And then I got some of them hard to look. 
And he said to me, he said, God, you don't want to see me. The older you get, the ugly you get. And I said to him, I said, God, the good thing about you, you're always the same. <laughs> see, that's wisdom.
I've been thinking about that all week. He said you really want to do things. So you got to do it in the name of the Lord. And so when I was thinking about that this morning when I got up, I thought about how I think by it. And the only reason it happened was because the name of the Lord. I thought about the old saints said, Lord, thank you for a reasonable portion of help and strength. I thought about the only reason it happened. It was called the name of the Lord. I thought about all of my gators, my enemies, and all of those that intended to do their harm this week. The only reason why it didn't happen is because the name of the Lord. Because I read his name, he said, no weapon has formed against me. Shall never no prosper. In every tongue that rises up against me. God will take care of that too. And when I start thinking about how thankful I ought to be. Because every time I think about how good God is being, I have to say, Lord, I'm so thankful for every storm that you got me through. I declare, Lord, that I'm thankful. You preserve my life, and I have to tell the Lord thank you. For all of the should, could, and would I have to say, Lord, thank you. For all of the bad choices and the wrong decisions, I have to say, Lord, thank you. For you allow me to come through the storm and the rain. A few minutes ago, I asked you to take a fine thing to tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. And some of you look like you were scratching your head, trying to figure out what in the world could I thank God for. But can I get you to say thank you for being so good? Thank the Lord for being my shelter in time of storm. Thank you, Lord, for being my peace in the midst of my trial. You is the word I hear. You're my battle axe. You're my 
can be superficial. Because there has to be an action in all will.
How did you get yourself this way? It don't take much to know. You know, it don't, it don't, and, and, and you're not good, but it's not intentional, but, but sometimes you just don't realize how much you have to thank God for. You got to make a big decision now about what you're going to wear from that When you had three dresses to be grown in my Thank you. 